Amen. Come on, say that. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. Now just stop right there and say, I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. See, see, there's a there's a thing about pressing that that lets you know that it ain't over. Yeah. <laughs> that we 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 know where we started, and there's a there's a place of origin that I was in this place. And then there's an ending place, like we're going to get to heaven and be there forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. But everything in between there is all about the pressing. Yeah. Yes, Every, everything is. in between there is about the process. Yes. And everything in between there is about whether or not you're willing to fight and get up on a day-to-day -day basis yes. and push a little bit harder yes. and do a little bit more and get a little bit better and get a little bit stronger. Yes. See, it's not about, you don't you don't just get a magic potion and you all of a sudden become good. No. Amen. You don't you don't get that. There's no I can put this oil on you and this oil ain't going to make you good all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. you, you will not have arrived. Amen. Yes. Amen. But, but the thing is, the thing is, is you're pressing. Yes. Are, are you still pressing? Are you still pressing forward? <laughs> Some of us, I should say, are we still moving? Because you, 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 can, you can become in danger of just being stagnant. And just not move at all. Just say, I'm saved, no evil have I done. I'm sanctified, I didn't sin today. God is all right. And that's it. But are you still pressing? Are you still moving? And, and so, and so, oftentimes, what what the enemy has done is allowed us to be saved and complacent. Yeah. Yes. Amen. You saved now, just don't bother nothing. Right. You saved now, just don't do anything. Just, I know you're going to heaven, but just don't try to take nobody with you. I know you're going to heaven, but don't try to change the world on your way. I, I know you're going to heaven, but don't touch nobody else's life. Leave those other people alone. Don't, don't worry about your neighborhood. Don't worry about your coworkers. Everybody else has got their own way. You don't want to interrupt their life. You don't want to interfere with what they're doing and what they're thinking. You know, you should just leave people alone and be quiet. You know, some people worship quiet. Everybody don't talk. All the lies that he tells us. All the lies that he tells us to keep us from pressing, to keep us from moving forward, from, to keep us from getting better. Amen. And, and, and he has put a lot of us to sleep. Yeah. He has put a lot of us to sleep. <laughs> and we just, just relax. Nothing to see here. Go ahead on. Kevin, what are you trying to say? I'm saying every time that you walk past a person that you know is sick, and you don't lay hands on them. Every time you walk past a person that you know needs to be saved, and you don't witness to them. Every time that you see someone in distress, and you don't offer a hand. Every time that you see someone that looks depressed, and you don't have a word of encouragement. You don't put a smile on somebody's face. You don't pat somebody on the back. You don't encourage somebody that's doing something good. And you jump on somebody that's going through Every time that you're doing that, it's, it's an opportunity that's missed that you're walking by and you become eventually numb to progress. You become, it becomes all right to you that nothing else is happening. When you go back and you reflect on times and periods of time like uh, the Protestant movement or for, for a lot of us, the Civil Rights Movement and things like that, the, the key to the Civil Rights Movement is that it had to keep going. It couldn't just be a bus boycott and then fizzle out. It couldn't be that because then it was just something happened and it was over. It couldn't be just Selma and then well, that's it. It had to keep going. It had to resonate in every community. It had to, somebody had to show up. Somebody had to be sitting in in another place. Somebody had to be protesting in another place. There had to be a march in another place. And as soon as the marching stops and the protesting stops, then the movement stops. And then if you're not careful, you'll begin to regress back to your previous state. As yes, yes, yes. soon as the movement stops, 
you'll find yourself sliding. In the old church, we used to call this backsliding. Soon as, soon as you stop pressing, you'll backslide. I know some of y'all have only been saved five minutes. Amen. For those who have been saved more than five minutes, you remember a time when you were on fire for God. So silly. You were so silly on fire for God that you couldn't eat without having revival. I mean, you know, I mean, when, when you sat down to the dinner table, you were speaking in tongues, you know. Amen. Look him in the side. Ha, oh, thank you, God. Chicken. You know. Amen. Amen. And, and you went in. I mean, everything was passionate. You were not satisfied to know that your cousin wasn't saved without quoting them a scripture, without laying hands on them, trying to sneak and put oil on their clothes, and all of that stuff like that. You, you was laying, laying hands on cars and trees and houses and everything. You, you believed that God was actively involved in every area of your life, and with a passion, you woke up speaking to the sun. Telling the sun how how hard to shine. Telling the rain don't rain in this area. <laughs> On fire for the Lord. Yes, On fire. I mean, fa crazy on fire for God. Radically saved. Yeah. Dare a devil. <laughs> Dare a devil to come around <laughs> and know he wasn't gonna get cast out. We're gonna spend the rest of the night. And we had to. But we were going to get that devil out of here. You weren't going to leave here still still drunk. You weren't going to leave here still addicted. You weren't going to leave here still sick. We, we were going to cast sickness out. And now we've just come very complacent. It's okay. We even, we even adopt new scriptures that ain't in the Bible. <laughs> You know, in, in the Bible appendix that we put in there, like, it's not your time yet. When God gets ready, you'll change. We start, we start adopting new things like, you know, you just need to pray more. Which, which is not scripture. Amen. See, I, I love this because, Nene, it puts me on the altar, and it put me on the altar right next to you. See, if I'm not walking in that authority and the power, then the word is speaking to the pulpit as well as it's speaking to the usher. Amen. But, but, but if we don't speak it, see, sometimes we don't even want to speak it. Let me, let me tell the truth. We don't want to speak it because it exposes us. Where's your devils you cast out? Where's your testimony? It's in the same place yours is. But we still got the same problem. I'm not exempt. You're not exempt. If I don't do it, does that mean what you say? Well, if the pastor didn't do it, I ain't going to do it either. Then we also put that on the list where mama used to say, if your, if your friends go to hell, you're going with them. We've got to get back engaged and, and engaged into the work, the passionate work that God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. We, we've got to get back on fire for God. To where he becomes the priority in our life and our ministry yeah. becomes the focal point of our day. And, and, I, and, I, and the truth be told is that you can't explain away the fact that he's not the priority. Yeah. Yeah. We give God what's left. If we, if we have any time left, we will pray. If we have any strength left, we will read. If we have, if we can squeeze it in our schedule, We'll go do some church work. Then, if not, then we fuss at the pastor and say, you're trying to take all of my time. <laughs> like the pastor don't have nothing else to do. Preach canon, okay, I'm going to try it, I'm trying. <laughs> you, you've got to realize what's happening to you. Is you. I realized that it took me a long time to get fat. I used to have stomach muscles that you could see. But over time, it gradually happened to the point that I got fatter than I'm comfortable with. But if I would have woke up one morning and just went from 
a 34 to a 44, I would have went into shock. And I would have went to the hospital and said, look at me. Something is wrong. Yesterday I was a 34. And now I'm a 44. You, you need to do surgery. You need to run some tests. I don't know why y'all laughing like this ain't the truth. Let, let your, let ladies, you, you, you came in yesterday, you was a 10, and you come in tomorrow, you a 20. Just wake up tomorrow and you wear a side 20 and see what's, see what's going to happen. That's going to change your world, Twan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wake up and tell us, I used to be able to wear this, and now I can't put it on. It does, right? Yeah. See, and, and, when, and when, you, when you realize that that type of change, if you woke up, Raven, you know, you wake up tomorrow, you in a 16. You know what I'm saying? What, what is this? I, I, I wear a 16 now. Something happened when you went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Something is wrong. And, 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 I don't know why you're acting like that's normal, like no big deal. 16 is fine. You know, no, that's not going to be all right. Not, not when you go. So when I go from 34 to 44, see, that, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. But the problem is I did it. I did it. So, but the problem is it happened over 10 years. See, so it happened, since it happened over 10 years, I was cool with it. It, it, didn't, it didn't feel as traumatic. The same thing was happening to me, but I didn't recognize it the same way. It didn't impact me the same way, so I became comfortable with it. But it's the same amount of trauma. So, so in the spirit, if you find yourself in a place to where you used to be here, Amen. And then over 10 years, you end up here. Not, not tomorrow, right, right, right. but over 10 years, you end up here. Then, then you realize that trauma has happened. But if I can keep you from looking at this, then you'll become comfortable with your slide. I only miss one Sunday. I'm going to pray on Saturday. I still go to church. I pay my tithes online. You see, we become more and more comfortable, and, and, and then he just rock us to sleep, and then you wake up at 44. When, when, you get, when you get to the point where you can't put your shoes on, somebody got to come help you. What happened to me? Patrick, when we used to be able to run a 10 second hundred, now, we, now if we make it to the end of the hundred, right. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Somebody better come get us. <laughs> what happened? What happened that you couldn't, can't, can't, can't run a hundred yards? You should run a hundred yards, then run back. Then run down there again and run back. Now you run down there and fall. What happened? You just go to sleep. You become more and more, and, and it's, it's so gradual, it's so patient that it doesn't even feel like sin. Wow. It doesn't even feel like we're in the wrong place. And, and the enemy has a, and so what happened is you got so saved at a point that you felt like you had arrived. You felt like you had already apprehended. You felt like I got it together. Yeah. And then you begin to accept the message that said it doesn't take that anymore. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it don't take all of that. I, I can still be saying God knows where I'm going. I pray to God in the car on the way to work. I was still spending time with God. You ain't spending time with your boo in the car on the way Come to work. Why, why, why does God get leftover time on the way to work while, while you singing a song on the radio station? Amen. But your boo gets quality time. Amen, amen. Your habits get quality time. Amen. You set aside time to satisfy your habits, but God gets what's left. Yeah, and and, and when he gets what's left, you don't realize that that is a slide. Yeah. It, it's, it's an emergency. It's a traumatic situation. You just gained 10 inches. Overnight. It's an emergency. And we're so comfortable. We're numb to it. We don't even realize. There's some of us, there's some of us, watch this. I, I know some people that I've charged to write.
write some things, and let alone the ones that God charged you to write them. And, and you're supposed to have been writing stuff 10 years ago, and you don't realize 10 years passed. You're supposed to accomplish some things 10 years ago, you don't even realize it's passed. The season is almost over, you don't even realize it's passed. The time to, the time to do that in, y'all mad at me, y'all ain't gonna say amen, I ain't saying nothing. Amen, <laughs> amen. The, the time to do that thing that God has called you to do is almost past. And you don't realize the urgency of the season. You don't, you don't even realize, say, you only got so long to raise kids. Right? Yeah, that's true. Amen. In a few minutes, your kids going to be grown. That's right. that's right. You can't wait until then. Amen. I got Michelle in the kitchen now. Michelle got to get in the kitchen. Come on here. This is how you scramble the egg. This is how you wash the dishes after you scramble the egg. I can't wait till she gets 16 and say, oh, by the way, you're supposed to clean. You see what I'm saying? It, it, that season is almost over. Yeah, yeah. Then she's going to be 20 yeah. and nasty. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Wonder why her house filthy. Because you didn't teach her when she was 10. Right. That's, and, and, and we just let the kids play. Oh, yeah. And the season is almost over. And they just playing and texting and snapping. Yeah. <laughs> and they get through doing all of that. And then you look up and they out of school and they still don't know how to make a biscuit. And then they're making babies and don't know how to make breakfast. All right. Who fault? Us. Because we was, we was tripping during the season that we're supposed to be teaching. See, you have, but, but, you, but the enemy just massage you to sleep. Go ahead. Relax. And the season is almost over. See, you can get that when I'm talking about your kids because you know they're going to be grown in a few years. But you don't get that when I'm talking about your ministry that you don't know that that season is about to pass. Your calling is not going to pass. The gift of the calling is, is without repentance. You're calling, you're always going to be called to be what you're called to be. But what you're supposed to do with it. So you're an evangelist and you're still getting ready to evangelize, but your time to evangelize and the people that you need to evangelize are right now. I can't, I can't wait. Uh, Kevin's been preaching for I don't know how many years now. I can't wait till now that I know something to go back and evangelize him. I evangelized him when I didn't know nothing. <coughs> I, I, I wasn't no Bible thumper. I, I, I was just reading the Bible right. good myself. Yeah, right. But what I knew, I said to him. Yeah. Amen. And I had this new thing called the Holy Ghost. Right. And the Holy Ghost is smart. Yes, yes. And the Holy Ghost will tell you stuff. Yes. Amen. The Holy Ghost told me stuff in the Bible. I was going, wow. Hey, man, it says this. And it says that. It was exciting. It was exciting me as I was exciting him. Right. Amen. Because it was new in my eyes just like it was new in his eyes. But it was working on me. And the same way it worked on me, it worked on him. And so it got him where he needed to be then. Amen. But I can't wait till now. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Well, my scanner, I just don't feel like I'm ready. So? So what? Who asked if you felt like you was ready? Who cares if you felt like you were ready? That don't change the season. You know that the, you know that it was going it was going to rain. It was going to be a storm. It, winter is coming. Yes. <laughs> they didn't care if it was ready. You ready? You ready for winter? Should the wild should the wildlings come now or no? <laughs> should the night walkers come now or should we wait a few months? They coming. War is upon us. <laughs> you don't get to choose. Well, no, it's not really a good time for me. The Night King coming. Now, what you gonna do? What are you gonna do? 
keep those, forget those things that are behind me. I talked about the basketball team. Yesterday they played crazy good. I mean stupid good. They did a great job. And now they got to forget. Amen. And now they got to forget. Amen. Yeah. See, now, now, now this is where we mess up, see, because, because a lot of times we only want to forget the bad things. <laughs> that's, that's what we've got to, when, we, when we preach that sermon we say forgetting those things that's behind us we think that's always the failures yeah, yes, we think right. that's always the mistakes yeah. last time I struck out so I forgot about it last time I threw the interception I forgot about it last time we lost I forgot about it last time I failed I forgot about it that's in the past amen but this is what we do if you, if you watch us watch our behavior we forget about those bad things but the good things we make trophies out of. We say, oh, hey, we won. <laughs> and we make a trophy. Hey, look, look at what we did. And, and I'm going to tell on us, watch, watch what happens. And five years later, we'll still be talking about what we did that one time. Yeah, yeah that's true. And 20 years later, we'll still be talking about that one time because we have no more victories. We have no more victories since then. We remember that one time. And we celebrate that one time. And it becomes our idol. And we worship that past success. Boy, you should have seen me. I was. I remember this one time, true story, I remember one time we were playing college football and I hit this boy so hard. I, I hit this boy so hard. We was on a kickoff return. And, and I turned around and I saw him coming. And I hit this boy so hard he made a sound that made me excited. <laughs> <laughs> When I, when I hit him, he made a mistake. He was running in my direction. And I hit him square. I mean, it was just like, man, it was like a tackling drill, like, like a clinic. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, this is what you're supposed to do when you tackle a fellow. You lower your hips. You square your shoulders. You put your eyes right in his numbers. And you explode through with your hip. And I heard him say, <laughs> And when he made that sound, it turned me on. <laughs> I jumped up over his head, and I turned into the incredible.